This is where we left it off in the previous video. We've nicely organized our worksheet and we're calculating the profit, the potential profit that we could make by selling all of our shares. But of course, now that we have added this trend column, we want to do something with it. We don't want to share, sell all our shares if the price is going up. So we want to make a calculation based on the trends. We will make the decision, are we selling or are we not selling? So how does this look like? We will add another worksheet, another column in this worksheet that we're going to call the number of the amount that we're going to sell based on the trend. So let's add another column, amount to sell. And then here we will use a conditional formula, the if formula. And that works as following. The first part of the if formula says, what are we going to look at? So we say, if the trend, the G column, is equal to up, in that case, after the comma, we say what we are doing. Well, if the trend is going up, we're not selling anything, we're selling zero shares. In the other case, if the trend is going down, let's say we sell half of our shares. We still remain half of it, but we want to sell half just to be safe if things are going wrong. And you see now in the first line, we're not selling anything. And in subsequent lines, in case the shares are going down, yes, we are selling some half of the shares that we have. And what I can do now here to round, as we've done in a previous video, is I could set it to zero decimals because I don't want, of course, to sell half a share. That's not possible. But what I could also do here instead is use the round function. It has the same function, it works the same. Some people prefer to use a round function because it's more clear what exactly is going on. You can see in the formula that something is being rounded and still, our data is connected to the web feed. So if we hit refresh and if something would have changed in the meantime, everything in the worksheet changes. So the data and the formulas and then also ultimately the decision of how much shares we're going to sell. So maybe you notice now that something is wrong in this worksheet. Maybe you are yelling at your computer screen, wait, wait, I found a mistake. Do you know what? This profit column is now based on the number of shares that I have, all of them. But if I'm not selling all of them, of course, I'm also not going to make profit out of all of them. So what I need to do is update my formula, not to be calculated based on the shares I have, but on the shares that I'm going to sell based on the trend. And what happens now here is, that this profit is depending on the column left and right to it. And that's not something we like. If we talk about organizing your worksheet, we want the data to flow nicely through your spreadsheet from left to right. So I've swapped those two columns and now the flow is nicely logical as you would read it normally from left to right. So that's also an organization factor that you can take into account when you are designing your own spreadsheets. So there's one more thing that we want to do. What we want to do is calculate the health of the portfolio that we have. So I want to know, am I, do I have a lot of up shares and a lot of down shares? Because if a big part of my portfolio is going down, maybe I want to make some other decisions. I want to buy additional shares that are going up. So what I could do potentially is I could use another conditional formula, as you see here. I could say, if the shares are going up, then I want to have the number of shares, and otherwise I have zero. And then in one column, I get a list of all the shares that are going up. And I could do the exact same thing for down, same function. If the shares are going down, if the trend is equal to down, then I pick the number of shares and otherwise I pick zero. And then I have two columns in which one is all the up shares and the other is all the down shares. And then of course, I guess you understand this, at the end of the worksheet, I can add a sum function and then I get an overview of the health of my portfolio, what, what part of it is going up and what part of it is going down. Let's see how that looks like. I'm going to sum this entire column, there we go. So 1,800 shares going up, 
And if I drag it, it's about 700 shares going down. So my portfolio looks pretty okay because a lot more shares are going up than that are going down. However, this calculation is long. You need two additional columns and two additional sum formulas just to get an idea of how things are going. This can be done in an easier way and let me show you how. So let's zoom out a little bit. Then you see all the extra information, all the extra space that we need, two extra columns just to calculate these three values that are up and down. So let's not do it. Let's clear this room. We are going to do it away with it. We don't need it anymore. Right click, clear contents. There we go. We don't need it anymore. Let me show you a better and way more compact way to actually analyze our, the health of our part portfolio. What we can use is a list of all the types. So we say we're looking for shares that are going up and shares that are going down. And then we use the sum if function is a combination of, of course, the sum and the if. And how this function works is that I can pick part of my spreadsheet. So I click one column and I say, I'm going to look at everything that matches in that column. So where am I going to look is the first part of the function. In the trend column, I'm going to look if something is going on, like with the normal if. Well, what do I need to compare to? As exactly the same as in the sum, as in the if function, I'm comparing is the trend equal to up? And I've just made a list of this. And what am I summing? The number of shares. And you see me drag down, and the exact same result is appearing as when we had the entire column with the sums. So it's a lot conciser, and also it allows us for easily adding other types of trends. For instance, we have a flat trend where nothing is changing. We can just add flat to the list and drag the formula down, whereas in the old situation, we needed an extra column for every new share type. So the sum if is a really nice combination of the sum and the if that takes up a lot less space and is more flexible if you want to change your worksheets. So this week we've looked at an example of a spreadsheet where we're calculating the value of stocks, we've looked at functions to manipulate strings, text values, we looked at conditional formulas, the if and the sum if, and pieced everything together with data taken from the web. So that's everything we, talk, we want to talk about this week, just one more thing, let me ask you once more to post your Excel fees on the forum so we have an idea of who we're working with. See you next week.